damn. Yes! Winston what is that? Zettimore! Winston, Winston, my boy. Right next to Bill Murray, man. Winston was my boy. And it is Zedemar. Do not forego his extra E. He's my 12th favorite Ghostbuster. Oh, come on. Oh. What? Are you counting extreme? Yeah, what? the monkey's number what? one. What? No, that's not extreme. Oh, that was the oh so he's my 16th favorite because the wheelchair guy's pretty bad. I can't too. believe I'm bringing up Ghostbuster continuity. Now, where are you? How do you? Where are you going? Stop leaving. Hey, get back here. One in Rome. Do you want to throw one? You no, I don't, I don't throw. All right, so this summer, yeah, we're taking another crack at the shell with Teenage Mutant yeah. Ninja Turtles. Can I say this movie right. looks like it's actually going to be fun? Right? Not impressed with the previous film, the uh, reboot film. Yeah. This looks fun as hell. It seems like it's embracing its cartoon roots. It's funny because like, Ninja Turtles is, is sort of divisive because it did start off as a comic book, but a lot of people, especially our generation, like we really knew it as the more fun uh, sort of kitty cartoon. Yep. And then so you've got those contingents of fans who were just like, no, but the comic book was ultra serious and it should be ultra serious. But man, you reread those comics, it is not ultra serious. There are Triceratop aliens, there is a fugitive android called a Fugitoid. Like, it is totally <laughs> playing with itself. Now, I think all that licensed stuff was originally just toy ideas that yeah, were then sure, made into cartoon yeah, shows yeah, yeah. that were then yeah. made into comic they, books. They, they were doing licensed comics. They've been doing licensed comics for as long as there have been comic books. Yeah. Like, if and, we were to talk about the fact that the Turtles uh, did their own thing, but a big part of what made Turtles popular was the licensing of that. Not the original Mirage Turtles, but the licensing of what Turtles were right, when back they were, to Archie. They were all about pizza, and, and yeah. they had the... And the toys. You can't, you can't talk about oh, turtle yeah, they licensing had the turtle, without getting into the toys. They had the turtle van, they had the turtle blimp. Which, which is in the movie. So the turtle quick. van's yeah. in the new movie. Yeah. As a kid, I really grew up on a lot of Disney licensed comics. Like, not just the normal like, Disney the, stuff. The comics. Like, like the, the DuckTales, the Darkwing oh, yeah. Duck. Oh, oh Darkwing the, Duck, man. Uh, DuckTales. Tailspin. Yeah. The stuff that appeared in Disney Adventure and that got expanded into its own comic line. Right on. Uh, which was all about taking these cartoons, very similar to the Turtles, and putting that into comic book form. Beyond that, you have The Simpsons did uh, uh, their comics. The I Simpsons got Simpsons me into comics. comics, I feel like. Oh, really? The Simpsons comics that you would see at like the grocery store when they sold comics at grocery stores. Oh, yeah, like the Radioactive Man that's, comics. That's Bart Man. Well, they had that, that great episode of the Treasure of the Sierra Madre episode. Oh, when the, when the yeah. guys fight over the comic in the treehouse. That was yeah. genius. I mean, it's, it's they all so want brilliant. Radioactive Man yeah, yeah, yeah. number one. But, it's so brilliant. Uh, uh, for me, comic book adaptations and licensing was all about G.I. Joe and Transformers. Yeah, see, for, for me, me I, all G.I. Joe all the time. I jumped Loved in it. I jumped in when Simon Furman started really developing the mythology yep. of the Transformers back in the 80s and started talking about like their creation myth and all that stuff. So for me, like the, the Transformers were actually a really strong entry point into sci-fi. Mm -hmm. Like hard alien sci-fi. What's really interesting is in the in the eighties and early nineties, it was very much uh, the cartoon was what fed popularity, but the comics is what fed story and continuity and, and, and depth. Well, and, and then when it flipped, and in the nineties, the the cartoon started to becoming very uh, in depth. There was the X Men uh, cartoon. There was Batman. Uh, and all, then, all pulling from the comics. All, but, all pulling from the, but then what happened was, is those cartoons were so popular, the comics almost licensed back itself, mm -hmm. and then there was the X-Men Adventures, which were all about the cartoon version of the X-Men, which was a variation of the Jim Lee, you know, blue, gold team era, or Batman Adventures, which was all about the Bruce Timm universe. Right. And that ex extended and those, know, into its own thing. And those Batman Adventures comics, though, were fantastic. The, one of the first comics that I remember holding in my hand was the late 80s, and it was the comic adaptation of uh, Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country. <laughs> Nerd! <laughs> and something Nerd. about, something about hey, that hey, book... Hey, the even number Star Treks were good. It yeah, was, and it was one of the good ones. And it was, it was a double-sized issue, and it sort of had all the things in it. And I loved the movie, but then I read the book, and that was, to me, that was reliving the movie over and over again. And there's stuff you like... You couldn't afford a VHS? I, <laughs> I was five years old. You Come on now. And obviously not an earner. No. Can I say, though, also, what's, what's cool now is some of these licensed comics are doing better reboots than film and TV. Oh, yeah. Which yeah. I find, like, Gem... Yeah. Jam and the Holograms comic is awesome. Yes. Yeah. So solid. That it's movie. Not, it would be great. If, it would be great if they made a gem movie. One of the other ones as a kid was Jurassic Park. 
Oh, which was the Topps comic? The Topps comic. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Guilty. I was seven years old Guilty. when those were coming out, and it was that hit mm. me perfectly. I feel like we've gone way too long talking about comic adaptations without giving props to Dark Horse Comics, which has led the way since the mm. the late eighties, early nineties, in doing comic book adaptation yeah, yeah. for license 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 books, Dark Horse hey, all the way own it. stuff that appeals to adults as well as kids, like yeah. Fight Club Two, which is like a big a big seller they have right now. And that's a big I mean, point. Uh, aside from the the clear obvious thing of Star Wars with Dark Horse, yeah. and they were they weren't just the bastion of that universe. They were the they were the standard bearer they, of the universe during a dark age of Star Wars. But it goes back. They did ter the Terminator. Aliens, oh. they're responsible. They're not responsible Robocop. for the qual Robocop, they're not responsible. Well, no, no wrong. The, the Marvel, Robocop. Marvel did Robo yeah, but Marvel did the Robocop adaptation first. But who they did the Terminator Robocop, Robocop, which is the greatest crossover in comic book history. That's what I'm thinking. I love that book. Yeah, Star Wars and Marvel did Star Wars first, too. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Marvel did No, it's very first. true. No, no it's very true. The whole reason we have the concept of aliens versus Predator, which Granted, the movies aren't great, but That's the true. video game's great, and the concept is awesome. Concept's great. It's all from Dark Horse Comics. The first people to do it were Dark Horse. It wasn't yep. Dark Horse didn't originate the idea. That was a pop culture thing. But what Dark no. Horse did in its time no. is they no. were the first people to, in a visual medium, put all of that together. And that led to, if you really play it out, that led to... Freddy vs. Jason. Yep. That led to uh, uh, Bruce Campbell versus uh, whatever. The, well, that a lot all of, that, of the things that he dis uh, destroyed. What we're seeing today in the versus mentality of feature films has its origins. You could trace back to the late '80s with the versus mentality of licensed comics. Well, I think IDW has taken that concept they and run so with it. So much. Batman Turtles, Green Lantern, Star Trek. Uh, who else? Which Doctor Who Star Trek. One of the Legion, better things. Legion of Superheroes Star Trek is one of my that favorite so books. Good. Last, oh, it's so amazing. And, and what's great about the licensed comics happening now is they can sort of fill in that void if, if whatever reboot happening in TV or cartoons is not hitting you. Because I'm not really into the new Transformer movies. I'm just not. They're not my thing. But the Transformer comics right now are so good. They have been good for years. The, the Ghostbusters comics are amazing. The Ghostbusters yep. comics takes everything in a comedy yeah. from the extreme Ghostbusters to the video game. But Pablo, uh, rare as it is, makes a really great point. <laughs> what? Uh, That's a shot at him. <laughs> That's a shot. <laughs> but with Ghostbusters, what's a really great point about that is we are now faced with a brand new Ghostbusters film. But what's great about this uh, new Ghostbusters universe is that it gets the playoff of an IDW license universe that has been existing for all this time. And you know what's really great as a license book? It just came out, that new Power Rangers book. Yes. Is that good? It's really good. Yeah. It's, it's all about that classic group. It, it's, it's a nostalgia bin for sure. But what Boom did was they put together a book that was all about, hey, you remember Power Rangers? Here's a badass way to show these Power Rangers. Hey, listen, Boom's doing a great job with it, but that show is a straight up piece of shit. Pablo, are you gonna take that? No. No, I'm not gonna take that. Power Rangers is my childhood, man. You're insulting it. As a young Hispanic boy, there were very few groups of superheroes, or especially shows on TV, American television, that had such a diverse group of people coming together for something positive to fight against evil. Were the Power Rangers maybe. Hispanic? There was a Hispanic hey, Power hey, Rangers. Hey, we still appreciated different cultures. <laughs> yeah, we, we just, this mixed kid appreciated seeing not just white people fight evil. Did then, you not watch uh, Captain Planet? Yeah, it was it was sort of similar to Captain Planet, where you actually had not just like you had different cultures set up. You saw like Star Trek before. Captain Planet was really cool, and that we didn't Captain usually Planet. see a hero before his time. A hero, a hero with a message. His time. That's true because the Captain Planet comics have not aged well. They were so into that time. They were so part of that. 90s environmentalist hero culture that they just haven't translated well. The entire purpose of Secret Wars was a toy line. Yep. Like, it's almost reverse... Uh, the original Marvel yeah. superhero yeah. Secret Wars. So, like, the whole concept of, let's put a whole bunch of uh, Marvel creations against each other, and we'll put it, we'll do a comic book, but really, it's a toy line. Mm -hmm. And it was Doctor Doom and Storm. And everyone and needs a shield. And that was going to be a thing. Yeah, look at Doctor Doom's new shield and armor. Yeah. Which, wow. the shield gave away their secret identity. Yeah, <laughs> whose idea was that? As a kid, I was just thinking, this this does not seem practical. So Secret Wars was basically a toy line that became not just a comic, but basically a cornerstone for the Marvel Universe. Yeah. And and that's sometimes what's really interesting about these licensed things, where they, they come up with some new take, 
some new idea. And some of it, you understand why it wouldn't work with the real universe. Sure. Some of it, though, you think, even if it's just a costume, you think, this actually looks really good. Why isn't this the main costume? Why isn't this conversation happening in the canon? And especially that's happening now with Injustice. Yeah. It starts off as a video game where the premise I'm not wild about. I thought it was I kind of been there, done that. But then the comic comes along, and the comic is really well done. And not only that, but has some great humor and banter. The conversations between Green Arrow and Harley Quinn in the Injustice comic alone. So great. So Whoa. good. The you're Arrow saying, Cave. You're saying there's a quality video game licensed comic book? Right? Really? Injustice, baby! Don't believe it. Disregard. I do not think that's true. Come on now, Injustice. Can I check out since you guys have been- Oh, please what, do. Tonight. We're doing what a What do you thing. got? What do you We're got? Talking here, man. Street Fighter G.I. Joe. I approve of half of that. No! How does that even work? Power Rangers. That's a good book. Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed? Isn't that a video game about a video game? Tomb Raider. John's getting a spank rag. No, no. I like no, Tomb Raider. No, How dare that's... you? Thank you, sir. This is terrible. Pages are already Leave. stuck together. I like Leave. Tomb Raider. Well, then that's a diss on you guys. It's your book. Wait, did Wally walk out with booze again? Damn it, Wally! And comics! Thank you guys, as always, for watching another comic shop show. Like, share, favorite, subscribe. Make sure to check out more episodes of the show. And also check out... Pablo, what do you do? YouTube.com slash Wildcat Sports. Alan? Crazy Sexy Geeks on SoundCloud and iTunes. Joe on Joe Podcast on iTunes. And thank you to Golden Apple Comics for letting us shoot here. After today's episode, I don't know if we're going to be invited back. Because Wally hit me in the head with a fucking Ninja Turtle. You deserved it. I Owl walked ball. away. No. Fuck you guys. The owner doesn't watch this show. Let's go, Bull.